Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It's a renewing system designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls on the bright side. Our number is 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. We do have a guest in our uh, second segment, our third segment at the bottom of the hour, Christopher McDougall who's the author of a really neat book called Natural Born Heroes, which is all about strength, endurance, heroism, doubt, health, diet. He's got a really interesting take on what it means to be a hero, and it applies to how we live our lives, and it's super cool, super cool stuff. It's called Natural Born Heroes. Chris also wrote another book called Born to Run, which is now being made into a movie. We'll be talking to Christopher at the bottom of the hour. So get your, uh, we'll get your calls here in our second segment, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or formulations, ingredients, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to our conversation, 844-236-6010. Of course, if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com and purchase products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well. You can also call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And if you want to purchase any of the, our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, if you're dealing with hyperpigmentation, dark spots, or accelerated aging of your skin, or you want to prevent, it's always best to prevent aging of the skin, or best to, it's always best to prevent any kind of health breakdown. When it comes to skin health, retinol is one of the best ways you can prevent aging of the skin. Even if you don't have it already, prevent it. If you have it, retinol is one of the few ingredients, It's along with vitamin C, it's the only ingredient that actually can reverse the signs of aging. And of course, if you're dealing with acne, retinol is one of the all-time great strategies for dealing with acne, acne-prone skin, topical strategies for dealing with acne-prone skin. And when you use our retinol 5% gel, you also get a big dose of premium fat-soluble vitamin C, never any preservatives, fragrances, filler, wax, oil, silicon, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. It's just the truth. Truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking progesterone, another one of those protecting hormones, steroid hormones that come from cholesterol, or more accurately, are versions of cholesterol. I hope I'm making that point, that these things, progesterone, pregnenolone, we'll be talking about DHEA later, these are really versions of cholesterol. They're not you know, if you, you listen to the mainstream, or you listen to, if you're a scientist or a researcher, or if you just, you're reading up on health, you'll hear, oh, these hormones are all derived from cholesterol or produced from cholesterol. It doesn't really hit home. It, you know, produced from cholesterol, that, that's just sort of some machinery that's involved there. No, they are cholesterol. There's no machinery. They're just a little tweak. That makes cholesterol really, really important. Probably the most, at least one of the most, I would say the most important chemicals in the body. Pregnenolone is cholesterol. Progesterone is cholesterol. They're well-being hormones. They're protection hormones. They especially, by the way, progesterone, especially, and pregnenolone, especially protect the body from estrogen. 
Progesterone balances out estrogen, and anyone on hormone replacement therapy should be using progesterone, but not the kind of progesterone you get from the doctor or from the pharmacy. Although nowadays you can get real progesterone. It used to be you could have to, you'd have to uh, use something called progestins, which are drug versions of progesterone, progestins. And when I was in practicing pharmacy and, and until very recently, doctors just assumed pro progestins were progesterone. What you're hearing today about progesterone really only became known maybe 15 years ago, 15 or 20 years ago. A guy named Dr. John Lee wrote a book called uh, "What Your oh, What the Heck Is This Book Called?" What your doctor doesn't tell you, what your doctor may not tell you about menopause. And John Lee, he uh, he got going in the late 80s and 1990s, and he really was one of the. I'd say he was the first guy to really popularize progesterone. And, ha and really get it in the public's mind that progesterone is really, really important stuff. That's where I learned about the importance of progesterone. They didn't teach us in pharmacy school about progesterone. They taught us about estrogen. But then when I graduated pharmacy school in the late 80s, I started reading Dr. Lee. He's since passed away, but his book is a classic, What Your Doctor May Not Tell You About Menopause. Read it if you're a menopausal or perimenopausal woman, or even if you're not, and you, you're soon, you know, eventually will be. It's also got lots of good, good information about premenstrual syndrome and, and menstrual, uh, 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 menstrual problems, I guess you'd say, endometriosis. Anyway, Dr. Lee was the first guy to really make this thing popular, progesterone. So anyway, progesterone derived from cholesterol, but really it's actually derived from pregnenolone. It's actually, it goes cholesterol, pregnenolone, progesterone, which means you can use pregnenolone to make progesterone. And because progesterone is turned into everything else, you can use progesterone to make everything else. You can use progesterone to make testosterone and estrogen. You can use progesterone cream and upregulate your ability to make testosterone and estrogen. It's a control point for the production of these other hormones. These other hormones are toxic. As you go down further away from cholesterol and from pregnenolone and from progesterone, you get into some toxic stuff. Testosterone is toxic. Have you guys seen the commercials or the, uh, the uh, uh, class action lawsuits, commercials for class action lawsuits for testosterone? If you've taken testosterone or if you've used testosterone and you've got a heart attack, you may be entitled to some money. Well, that's because testosterone is toxic stuff. Now, it's important, obviously. Likewise, estrogen, they're important, but they're toxic. So the best way to stimulate your production of these things is to help give the body what it needs so the body can do it. The body isn't going to make excessive amounts, but when we take it as a drug, we bypass the body's safety mechanisms. Using progesterone to increase your estrogen and testosterone allows the body to make what it needs. And also, conversely, the less progesterone we're making as we get older, the less of these other hormones we're going to be making. So using progesterone not only gives you this little safety valve, your body isn't going to make too much, but if you're getting older, it's a great way to stimulate your own testosterone and uh, estrogen above and beyond the wonderful benefits that you're going to get from progesterone. This is the advantages, the, these are the advantages to using parent compounds. When you want to go downstream, when you want to increase the amount of chemistry that's downstream, use a parent compound. Cholesterol, pregnenolone, progesterone, these are parent compounds. We talked about how pregnenolone is protective for the brain. It's probably, if not one of, if not the, it's one of the brain's most neuroprotective compounds. While progesterone is also neuroprotective. It also have, plays a very important role in brain health and in mental health. It's involved with uh, coping. It's involved with stress, or stress management, I should say. Pre uh, it can uh, have anti-seizure effects like pregnenolone. Pregnenolone is the best anti-seizure, uh, best or most important of the anti-seizure uh, steroid hormones, but pre progesterone also has uh, anti-seizure effects. It's important for heart health. It's important for circulatory health. It's important for bone health. Unlike estrogen, by the way, which decreases the breakdown of bone, progesterone actually turns on the production of bone. How cool is that? All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010. We're coming back with more good health information on the bright side right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in this segment. We have a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour 
Christopher McDougall is the author of a book called Natural Born Heroes, Mastering the Lost Secrets of Strength and Endurance. And he's got some really interesting things to say about heroism and everyday life and health and uh, uh, how the body really works. You know, our ideas on strength, our ideas on what it means to be strong is really kind of, you know, it flies in the face of how the body works, really, you know bodybuilders and weightlifters and Arnold Schwarzenegger types, big muscle types, that's not necessarily associated with strength. Although, or, or I shouldn't say it is associated with strength, but it's not necessarily associated with health. Health is more about flexibility. Health and effectiveness, actually working with your body, is much more about stretching. It's much more about the rubbery part of the body, where the stuff that's called fascia. You know, if you look inside a baseball, you dig inside a baseball, you'll see a little, a little super ball. I remember when I was a kid, I used to be fascinated with taking apart baseballs. After you used them for a long time, the baseball would tear up and you, you couldn't use it anymore, so we would just rip it apart. And inside, there was always this rubbery stuff. Well, it turns out that rubbery stuff is what gives a baseball its bounce, its spring. It's what allows you to, uh, to, to hit a baseball and it travels 400 feet. Golf ball's the same way. It's all about explosive power, not necessarily raw power. Anyway, this is what, uh, these are the kinds of things we'll be talking about at the bottom of the hour with Christopher McDougall, author of Natural Born Heroes. If you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, please go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And if you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products, you can go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's take our first phone call and go to David in Pennsylvania. What's going on, David? Hey, right side, Ben. This is awesome to talk to you. First time caller. Oh, good. And I've been listening oh. to you for about a year and a half. Uh, oh, nice. Years, and love the longevity products. Um, it's really just been awesome to introduce my family to them. Um, Good deal. Uh, probiotics and BCC. So Did awesome. you know about any of this stuff at all beforehand? N no, I didn't. So, Not necessarily uh, the longevity products, but nutritional supplementation and all of these strategies that we talked no, about. No, it's, it's just been uh, pretty new to us in the past two years. Uh, consciously, Good. I've tried to make the decisions eating, but uh, just never got it realized. The GMO, the glyphosate, uh, the Roundup, all that stuff. So... Just, Interesting. All right. A great awakening. Are you, are you in the middle of Pennsylvania in the farm country there by any chance? Uh, uh, Lancaster County, which is okay. mainly themed um, Amish. Yeah, that's the Amish yeah. part. I'm from, I'm from out there in that kind of general vicinity. That's beautiful Very country, awesome. by the way. Yeah, yes, beautiful country. Uh, my question or uh, my concern, my uncle was uh, is diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. Oh, and, I'm sorry. Uh, so it's not looking very well for him, but I would like to see what some of the best recommendations. Uh, In, intravenous nutrition. Okay. Intravenous nutrition and hyperbaric oxygen. Those are the two probably things that come to mind right away. You know what I mean by hyperbaric oxygen? You get in an oxygen chamber and you pump oxygen into the body. Okay. Have, most hospitals or a lot of hospitals will have a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. They use them for, for uh, emphysema and things, but it will also help. Uh, for all cancer, I'd be doing hyperbaric oxygen and intravenous nutrition, particularly something called glutathione. Have you heard of that? Yes. Uh, you got glutathione, uh, uh, vitamin C, and don't let anybody tell you vitamin C doesn't work. It does. Uh, at least the literature is very positive on it. Uh, vitamin C for cancer. Um, uh, uh, selenium, the B complex. And of course, staying off of sugar and making sure he's on a supplement program is also, you know, is also good, too. Here's the thing with lung cancer. Even if you're not going to the cure, you're gonna, not going to cure it at stage four, you can make him feel better. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can mitigate right. or, or minimize the misery of it. So things, all these strategies, I'm not telling you necessarily you're going to cure cancer with it, but you'll make right. his life better. You know what I'm saying? You'll make him stronger. And you may, you know, the odds of improving the condition are much greater than if you don't do these things. That's what, yeah, and that's what I'm trying to, trying to do because they want to, you know, start chemo. They didn't talk about radiation, but I'm trying to help them. So he just got diagnosed? He just got diagnosed? Did he just get diagnosed with stage four cancer all of a sudden kind of thing? Yeah, well, he has Lyme. He was uh, real sick about three months ago, and they said he had Lyme's disease. And then mm. uh, started giving him some strong antibiotics to deal with that. And then uh, fast forward about two months, they found a, a mass in his chest. And then 
uh, about two weeks ago, <clears throat> uh, doing biopsy and everything. He had fluid around the heart, so he was in the hospital for about eight days, uh, draining that fluid about a gallon and a half away from his heart, and then uh, and then well, he's, I was able he, to diagnose him with. He's he's breaking blood. down signif- He's breaking down significantly, David. How old? Right. How old is? How old is he? He's in his uh, mid sixties. Okay. About 60, hard life. Sixty-seven. Did he uh, live yeah, a hard he, life? He worked, yeah, he has. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like the the body's giving up. Look, if he wants to turn it around, he can he, he can start the process. I don't know how far along he is, but he can start the process with what I'm saying. A good nutritional supplement program on top of that, caloric restriction, fasting, all of that. Now, if he you know, not everybody wants to turn it around, but if he wants to right. start to turn it around, he can. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you so, you so much, much for your call, man. Thanks for the kind words Take too. Care. Appreciate it. All right, another David in Connecticut. What's going on, man? Welcome to the bright side. Hello? David in, yes, sir. David in Connecticut. What's up? Yes, how are you? Thank you for taking my call. I appreciate it. Sure. Um, my, my question is about methylation. Um, yes. I had just been diagnosed with the MTH. Oh, uh, I, was waiting. I was hoping somebody would, would call in about that because I've been patient, meaning to talk yeah. about it. Yeah, I've been meaning yeah, to I talk got, about it. I'm, hetero, I'm heterozygous. So yeah, I got, here's the thing, David. Uh, David, yeah. hey, let me explain this. Okay. okay. Methylation defects, which is bas- basically what you're talking about, occur on a continuum. It's not like you have it or you don't have it. People have it to different degrees. Follow me? Gotcha. Now, okay. So just because you have a methylation issue doesn't mean you got a huge, tremendous health problem here. But you got to help your body methylate. Methylation is a chemical reaction that occurs, and it's, it's super fascinating. I don't want to get into too much biochemistry, but it's super duper fascinating. It involves genetics. It involves how we how we detoxify things like homocysteine, which you may have heard of, which is involved in yeah. lots of diseases. Uh, so here's the thing: help your body methylate. That's what you want to do. Veggies are the best way, but there's also things like SAMe that can do it, help your body methylate. The B-complex can help your body methylate. There's something called betaine, which you'll find in the ultimate enzymes from longevity that will help the body methylate. Support methylation. It's not like it's some kind of tragic thing. I got an MTHFR deficiency, and I hear it all the time. Just support your methylation. Supporting methylation is part of being healthy and being strong. And so that means getting on a nutritional supplement program. It means moving your lymph and blood for that matter. It means making sure you're digesting your food correctly to release methyls from food. I mean, there's all kinds of strategies. Don't look at it like I've got a problem. Look at it like I just got to do all the things that I have to do to be healthy that we talk about on the bright side all the time. You follow me? Now, I should also tell you, I, I'm suspicious of these genetic tests, these new genetic tests they have out there. I don't know how effective they are, how accurate they are. Do you? <laughs> Not at all. You know, right? That's what I'm saying. No, they make a lot of money. I'll tell you that. They make a ton of money on them, but I don't know how effective they are. I don't know if they're, they're making it up even. All right. Hey, David, that's the music, man. If you want to call back tomorrow, I'll be glad to talk about it. But did that make sense how I explained that? Use methylation no, agents and good health. Okay, good. All right. All right. Take care, man. All right. We will be talking to Christopher McDougall on our, uh, for the next two segments, author of the book Natural Born Heroes. Got some really interesting things to say about heroism and good health. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. You're listening to the Bright Side. Bad news. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in this segment. We have a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour. Christopher McDougall is the author of a book called Natural Born Heroes, Mastering the Lost Secrets of Strength and Endurance, and he's got some really interesting things to say about heroism and everyday life and health and uh, uh, how the body really works. You know, our ideas on strength, our ideas on what it means to be strong is really kind of, you know, it flies in the face of how the body works, really, you know bodybuilders and weightlifters and Arnold Schwarzenegger types, big muscle types, that's not necessarily associated with strength. Although, or, or I shouldn't say it is associated with strength, but it's not necessarily associated with health. Health is more about flexibility. Health and effectiveness, actually working with your body, is much more about stretching. It's much more about the rubbery part of the body, where the stuff that's called fascia. You know, if you look inside a baseball, you dig inside a baseball, you'll see a little, a little super ball. I remember when I was a kid, I used to be fascinated with taking apart baseballs. 
after you used them for a long time, the baseball would tear up and you, you couldn't use it anymore. So we would just rip it apart. And inside, there was always this rubbery stuff. Well, it turns out that rubbery stuff is what gives a baseball its bounce, its spring. It's what allows you to, uh, to, to hit a baseball and it travels 400 feet. Golf ball is the same way. It's all about explosive power, not necessarily raw power. Anyway, this is what, uh, these are the kinds of things we'll be talking about at the bottom of the hour with Christopher McDougall, author of Natural Born Heroes. If you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, please go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And if you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products, you can go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's take our first phone call and go to David in Pennsylvania. What's going on, David? Hey, right side, Ben. This is awesome to talk to you. First time caller. Oh, good. And I've been listening oh. to you for about a year and a half. Uh, oh, nice. Years, and love the longevity product. Um, it's really just been awesome to introduce my family to them. On, good deal. Uh, probiotics and BTC. So Did awesome. you know about any of this stuff at all beforehand? No, I didn't. So, Not necessarily uh, the longevity products, but nutritional supplementation and all of these strategies that we talk no, about. No, it's, it's just been uh, pretty new to us in the past two years. Uh, constantly good. have tried to make good decisions eating, but uh, just never got it realized. The GMO, the glyphosate, uh, the Roundup, all that stuff. So just, Interesting. It's been all right. A great awakening. Are you, are you in the middle of Pennsylvania in the farm country there by any chance? Uh, uh, Lancaster County, which is okay. mainly themed um, yeah that's the Amish yeah. part I'm from I'm from out there in that kind of general vicinity that's beautiful Very country awesome. by the way yeah yes, beautiful country uh, my question or uh, my concern my uncle was uh, is diagnosed with stage four lung cancer oh and, I'm sorry uh, so it's not looking very well for him but I would like to see what some of the best recommendations uh, In- intravenous I nutrition help them Okay. Intravenous nutrition and hyperbaric oxygen. Those are the two probably things that come to mind right away. You know what I mean by hyperbaric oxygen? You get in an oxygen chamber and you pump oxygen into the body. Okay. They have, most hospitals or a lot of hospitals will have a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. They use them for, for uh, emphysema and things, but it will also help. Uh, for all cancer, I'd be doing hyperbaric oxygen and intravenous nutrition, particularly something called glutathione. Have you heard of that? Yes. Uh, you got glutathione, uh, uh, vitamin C, and don't let anybody tell you vitamin C doesn't work. It does. Uh, at least the literature is very positive on it. Uh, vitamin C for cancer. Um, uh, uh, selenium, the B complex. Of course, staying off of sugar and making sure he's on a supplement program is also, you know, is also good too. Here's the thing with lung cancer: even if you're not going to the cure, you're gonna, not going to cure it at stage four. You can make him feel better. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can mitigate right. or, or minimize the misery of it. So things, all these strategies, I'm not telling you necessarily you're going to cure cancer with it, but you'll make right. his life better. You know what I'm saying? You'll make him stronger. And you may, you know, the odds of improving the condition are much greater than if you don't do these things. That's what, yeah, and that's what I'm trying to trying to do because they want to, you know, start chemo. They didn't talk about radiation, but I'm trying to help them. So he just got diagnosed? He just got diagnosed. Did he just get diagnosed with stage four cancer all of a sudden kind of thing? Yeah, well, he had Lyme. He was uh, real sick about three months ago, and they said he had Lyme's disease. And then mm. uh, started giving him some strong antibiotics to deal with that. And then fast forward about two months, they found a, a mass in his chest. And then uh, about two weeks ago, <clears throat> uh, doing biopsy and everything, he had fluid around the heart. So he was in the hospital for about eight days. Uh, draining that fluid about a gallon and a half away from his heart, and then uh, and then well, he's, I was able he, to diagnose him with he's he's cancer. breaking down signif- he's breaking down significantly. David, how old right. how old is how old is he? He's in his uh, mid sixties. Okay, about 60, hard life. Sixty seven. Uh, Did he live yeah, a hard he, life? He works, yeah, he has. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like the the body's giving up. Look, if he wants to turn it around, he can he, he can start the process. I don't know how far along he is, but he can start the process with what I'm saying. A good nutritional supplement program on top of that, caloric restriction, fasting, all of that. Now, if he, you, you know, not everybody wants to turn it around, but if he wants to right. start to turn it around, he can. Okay? Okay. Thank, Thank you so, you so much, much for your call, man. Thanks for the kind words to appreciate it. All right, another David in Connecticut. What's going on, man? Welcome to the bright side. Hello? David, 
Yes, sir. David in Connecticut. What's up? Yes, how are you? Thank you for taking my call. I appreciate it. Sure. Um, my, my question is about methylation. Um, yes. I had just been diagnosed with the MTH. Oh, uh, I was waiting. I was hoping somebody would, would call in about that because I've been patient, meaning to talk yeah. about it. Yeah, I've been meaning yeah, to I talk got, about it. I'm, hetero, I'm heterozygous. So yeah, here's the thing, David. Uh, David, yeah. hey, let me explain this. Okay. okay. Methylation defects, which is bas basically what you're talking about, occur on a continuum. It's not like you have it or you don't have it. People have it to different degrees. Follow me? Gotcha. Now, okay. So just because you have a methylation issue doesn't mean you got a huge, tremendous health problem here. But you got to help your body methylate. Methylation is a chemical reaction that occurs, and it's, it's super fascinating. I don't want to get into too much biochemistry, but it's super duper fascinating. It involves genetics. It involves how we how we detoxify things like homocysteine, which you may have heard of, which is involved in yeah. lots of diseases. Uh, so here's the thing: help your body methylate. That's what you want to do. Veggies are the best way, but there's also things like SAMe that can do it, help your body methylate. The B-complex can help your body methylate. There's something called betaine, which you'll find in the ultimate enzymes from longevity that will help the body methylate. Support methylation. It's not like it's some kind of tragic thing. I got an MTHFR deficiency, and I hear it all the time. Just support your methylation. Supporting methylation is part of being healthy and being strong. And so that means getting on a nutritional supplement program. It means moving your lymph and blood for that matter. It means making sure you're digesting your food correctly to release methyls from food. I mean, there's all kinds of strategies. Don't look at it like I've got a problem. Look at it like I just got to do all the things that I have to do to be healthy that we talk about on the bright side all the time. You follow me? Now, gotcha. yeah. the, I should also tell you, I, I'm suspicious of these genetic tests, these new genetic tests they have out there. I don't know how effective they are, how accurate they are do you <laughs> you know right that's what i'm saying no, they make a lot of money i'll tell you that they make a ton of money on them but i don't know how effective they are i don't know if they're, they're making it up even all right hey david that's the music man if you want to call back tomorrow i'll be glad to talk about it but did that make sense how i explained that use methylation no, agents and good health okay good all right all right take care man all right we will be talking to Christopher McDougall on our, uh, for the next two segments, author of the book Natural Born Heroes. Got some really interesting things to say about heroism and good health. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. You're listening to The Bread. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Chris McDougall, author of a really cool book called Natural Born Heroes, Mastering the Lost Secrets of Strength and Endurance. Chris, so... Uh, Tell me about your, you got an interesting take on heroism and health. Make an, an interesting connection between the two. And tell us, how can we use heroism to get healthy if we're not healthy? I think that's one of the things we, we tend to forget about in our lives. We, we sort of separate our lives between our, our work and our, and our play, our physical side and our mental side. And, and most of our lives are taken up by the mental side. And we forget that we're actually physical animals that mm. have evolved to respond to emergencies in lots of different ways. You know, humans are amazingly adaptable compared to other species. We can climb and run and swim and lift things and throw things, yet most of us never do any of these things. We, we forget how good we are at throwing and climbing. So, and the problem then is a crisis comes along, and it might be a very simple thing, but we don't know how to respond. So there's a guy named Georges Hebert. He was a French naval officer, and he was based off the island of Martinique on a troop ship when the volcano in the center of Martinique began to explode in the early 1900s. So he jumped into a rescue boat and went there to try and save people, and he was horrified as he watched thousands of people dying only because they couldn't do these very simple, basic movements and things that may sound simple, but if we had to do them ourselves today, we may not be able to, like... People couldn't climb a small rope, you know, a 10-foot rope. They couldn't climb up that rope to get on the boat, or they couldn't pick up a child and carry that child. The child wasn't heavy, but they weren't used to, to lifting mm. that kind of a weight, or they couldn't jump across a little bit of an obstacle. So, so it's not what something they realized is that, you know, humans have lost the ability to respond naturally. And the only way to get that back, the only way to become that natural hero is to retrain that body. So... So we have all these things built into us. It's not like it's it's not like something that we, that we have to be great at. If we have cancer, or we're dealing with arthritis or an autoimmune disease. The heroism that it takes to deal with those kinds of health crises are built into all of us. You know, and the thing about it, you want proof of this? 
go outside sometime and watch a bunch of five-year-olds. And that was George Bear. When, when George Bear wanted to learn how to retrain humans to be natural animals again, he realized the best teachers of all are, are about four years old. If you watch kids at play, you know, what are they doing? Everything you're telling them to stop doing is exactly what they should be doing. They're climbing on stuff. They're jumping mm. on stuff. They're mm. kicking their brothers. They're crawling and getting dirty. They are practicing the natural movements of survival. And where does this take you then down the line? You're dealing with, I get arthritis or a, you know, a, a much more crippling um, or debilitating ailment. If your body has been trained to be adaptable and to respond to movement, I mean, the movement, again, it's, it's one of the greatest medicines we have. And if you can still mm. force yourself to move your body and enjoy it, mm. then you can be better prepared for those crises as they arrive. What about somebody who's, who's elderly or maybe even not elderly, middle-aged, but hasn't done it for decades? Can they start? How would somebody like that start? Well, I'm going to bring you back to your talk, too, about how you hated running and yeah. you hated running on the treadmill. Yeah. I have a good friend named Barefoot Ted, and you might remember, remember, remember Barefoot Ted from The Adventures of, of Born to Run, uh, my previous book. Barefoot Ted is a wacky guy that I usually make fun of and then five months later find out that I'm doing exactly what he said. So one time I was out running with Barefoot Ted. He's in a 100-mile race, and I joined him for the last 15 miles. Everybody else is miserable. They're, they're, they're feet hurt, they're tired, they're sore. Ted is having a blast. It's like this whole thing was a big surprise party just for him. And I was like, Ted, dude, how on earth are you having fun? And he goes, you know, the problem is most people spend their lives practicing pain. I practice pleasure. So when people go out to run, they go as fast as they can, as hard as they can, until uh -huh. it's unpleasant, and then they don't want to do it again. But I go out, and I go for a run, and I'll pet a dog, and I'll talk to my wife, and I'll smell a flower. Oh, wow. He's not obsessed with getting as fast and as far as he can. He's obsessed with enjoying it, so the next day, he can't wait to start again. So let's say you're that elderly person who hasn't uh, exercised in a long time. Don't worry about how fast you're going, how far you're going, oh, that's great. what your shorts look like. Just get out there and have some fun. That is great, great advice. In other words, you don't necessarily have to get a membership at the gym. You could just, like, well, I don't know, pick cherries or something or just, like, yeah, you know, take you a walk some. Garden, man, you go outside and you move some mulch around, you yeah. get a workout. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Oh, that's great advice. I love it. All right, we've been talking about the ketogenic diet here on this program for a while now. Are you familiar with that? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, sure. Okay, good. Can you tell us a little bit about how that relates to, to strength and heroism, for that matter? Yeah, it's exactly what I was intrigued by. So, you know, if you're running through the mountains, drinking this brown water and trying to survive, you know, how exactly is your body getting the caloric energy it needs? And that led me to two people that I found to be really useful. One of them is Dr. Phil Moffatone, who was training Ironman triathletes back in the 1980s. And he, he's wondering the same thing. You know, the Ironman was a pretty new challenge. And he thought, how on earth do you get the caloric energy you need to go for 18 hours of nonstop activity? And what he realized is that most people are on a constant sugar cycle. They're constantly putting one fast burn fuel down their throat after another. It's oatmeal followed by a muffin, followed by a sandwich, followed by spaghetti. Mm. Eating, like, you know, grazing, stuff. grazing. Yeah, you're constantly grazing. But what if you get rid of that? and you use the stored body fat that's already on your body. And that led to another guy named Dr. Tim Noakes. Now, Tim Noakes is a sports scientist. He's the guy that came up with the whole notion of carbohydrate loading in the first place back in the 70s. Wow. He's the reason why they have these pasta dinners before marathons. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden, very recently, he turned around and goes, oh, my God, I am so sorry. Oh, wow. I was wrong. Oh, Carbohydrates wow. are not the way to go. So it's, a, uh, it's counterintuitive in a sense because nobody wants to gain weight. They don't want to gain fat, but you're saying eat fat. I mean, I, uh, we've been talking about yeah. it for a while, but it, it kind of makes sense when you think about it. I mean, fat is the densest source of energy, right? Right. If you don't eat fat, your body's going to store it. If your body senses a lack of saturated fat coming in through your mouth, it is going to take those high glycemic foods and say, oh, my God, we must be short on fat. We better pack some away. But if your body senses that there is plenty of It'll nice burn natural it. fat coming in, then it's not going to store it. It's actually going to yeah. burn its reserves. And yeah. you'll end up, by eating fat, you actually burn more fat. All right. We got about a minute here, Chris. And it's been very interesting, by the way. The book's called uh, Natural Born Heroes. Christopher McDougall is the author. Uh, you have a really neat quote in the book. Health equals heroism. Hero heroism equals health. Uh, as a conclusion, if you tell us. If respond, then you're, you're, you're kind of useless. Say that again. If you can't respond, then what good are you? And that's the thing about it. Be fit to be useful. 
Ah, yes. And this is where you, you bring the, a very interesting subject that I never would have thought was associated with heroism, and that's compassion. Yeah. Because, you know, you can be the strongest, toughest guy in the world, but if you don't care about anybody, then you are just a lump of meat that's just getting in the way. Well, so being, being a hero almost by definition involves somehow compassion. That's it. The idea is be observant, care about people, and be there for them, and they will be there for you. The oldest lesson in literature, you know, that's care about others. That's beautiful. All right, the, uh, the Holy Trinity, the Hero's Holy Trinity, real quick, and then we'll wind down. Strength, skill, and compassion. Train your body, train your brain, train your heart. That's awesome. Mind, body, and soul. Love it. We've been talking to Christopher McDougall. Thanks so much, Chris. Appreciate it. What is, what is your website? It's chrismcdougall.com with two L's at the end. Find me on Facebook. Find me on Twitter. I'm always happy to answer questions. Oh, that's awesome. The book's Natural Born Heroes is super fascinating, real interesting. Thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate it, Chris. Love the Ben. Great conversation. Thank you. All right, buddy. Have a great day. That was Christopher McDougall. The book is Natural Born Heroes, Mastering the Lost Secrets of Strength and Endurance. And he's got a lot of good health information in there as well. He talks about the ketogenic diet. He doesn't call it the ketogenic diet, though, but he uh, basically talks about the ketogenic diet, the high-fat diet, talks about sugar intake, and he's got some really interesting takes on how how to make the body healthy if you're not healthy if you if you are healthy how to improve your health and if you're not healthy how to how to get healthy the book is natural born killers and uh, author chris mcdougall all right thanks for listening friends we uh, are flat out of time if you're interested in checking out my truth skin health products please go to truthtreatments.com make sure you take a specially long look at our truth retinol gel and our truth balm as well as our truth serum and truth omega-6 healing cream and of course if you want to join me in my mission to Educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you want to make some money selling Longevity products, some side money or some primary money, lots of folks making good money. Or if you want to just get your products at the wholesale price, you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team if you head over to criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com or brightsideben.com. You can sign up right from the website. If you just want to buy products, you can buy products right off the website as well. Of course, you're also welcome to call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Tomorrow, we'll continue talking progesterone, my second favorite after pregnenolone hormone in the body, steroid hormone in the body. It's just as protecting as pregnenolone, but it's got some other really interesting features and benefits. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue talking hormone health, skin health, and the ketogenic diet on the Brightside. Right side. Thanks for listening, friends. Have yourselves a spectacular, beautiful, awesome, wonderful day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you later. All later. Bye for now. Goddess.